Hello IB environmental students. Today we're going to be talking about the effects of global warming, how those temperature increases impact many other things. All right, let's jump in. The first thing that temperature rising would do is it's going to really impact the sea level and specifically it's going to cause it to rise. Um, a lot of that's going to be due to the fact that polar ice caps and glaciers are melting. We can see that's from some of these visuals. Um, and with that, there's going to be an overall sea level rise. Um, potentially, that will, could then cause flooding and landslides, loss of property, etc. Picture Florida underwater for the most part. Anything that's at sea level or even within about one to five feet is a potential kind of low-lying area that could be affected by sea level rise in the future. This is also potentially because we're really taking a lot of fresh water that's stored up in these ice areas that slowly melts over time. If it quickly melts, that's a lot of fresh water that is right now melting into salty water and that is really hard to separate out and make available for drinking water. So not such a great thing. Um, other things, it's going to affect local weather on a short term basis as well. Um, because of the temperature increase, temperatures related to just having more energy and more energy is going to cause more violent and sporadic storms. We see this with like super droughts. We see this with super severe thunderstorms, super severe rain events. Overall, we're going to see precipitation come at extreme amounts and really sporadically. So places like right now, California have dealt with drought, 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 and suddenly they were smashed with rain. They're dealing with landslides and flooding events because the, the land is just not used to it and it's just too quick versus over time and very casual. This is overall going to very much affect soil erosion, soil degradation, which we know is a problem normally and not great. Um, with that, with the temperature changing and changing of weather, it's going to affect how we produce our food on the planet. So the weird thing is normally our most productive Think gross and net primary productivity, how much organic matter we're growing. Um, that's normally the highest at the equator where there's the most sunlight, the most rain, and the most um, warmth. And the interesting thing is with the climate changing, productivity is beginning to shift away from the equator because now that area is almost too hot and things can't survive and it might be getting drier. So this means that those areas, the soil quality might be getting worse in some areas. Um, this is also causing pests to spread. Um, colder winters are kind of getting shorter. And once in a while, like the previous slide said, we'll have a blizzard crazy event that no one's really prepared for. Related with all these changes and changes in productivity, um, and food availability, that's not only going to affect us as humans, that will affect other animals. Animals that move quickly, they can kind of migrate, but plants can't move. So a lot of diversity of plants will diminish. Um, overall, we would consider that biome shifting, but just know that animals are a little bit better at adapting in a short-term quick situation than plants. So biomes, meaning the tropics, that's why we might see those tropical pests and diseases upshift into um, higher um, areas than they're currently in where they're stuck in the tropical zone and near the equator. And then overall, we might just have lower net primary productivity and lower biodiversity overall because it's just getting too hot for things to survive and survive well. The stability is decreasing. So lower system resilience, more instability. So with less biodiversity, if there's somehow a big event, a disturbance, whether it's flood, volcano, um, disease, pest, it's just really risky because the low biodiversity means that not a lot can really survive because there's not a lot of variation in the organisms out there. Um, now back to humans, because of course we're very anthropocentric, um, we would be nervous about a lot of these things because a lot of these things are related to, for us, heat waves and droughts. We got to be really careful, especially the young and the old will be most affected by that. 
Um, we also heard about these pests. That is a really big scary thing because these insect-borne diseases like malaria, yellow fever, dengue fever, they're moving away from the equator. So you might have said, ah, unless I go to the Amazon, I don't have to be worried about these things. Well, I mean... Hopefully we don't have to be worried about them, but those things are starting to shift further north and further south away from the equator. So over time, we might have to start being worried about those diseases making their way towards us. Um, we're having extreme wet climates, having extreme dry climates. Those relate to some problems in human health. We are having more people with um, asthma problems related to fungal diseases because fungi like to grow when it is wet. We're having people have trouble with the dust and asthma as well um, when it gets too dry. So, I mean, it's not great in either extreme. We as humans really like stable situations that are not super extreme. Um, and then with all these extreme weather disturbances and events, um, they're going to cause global unrest, global panic at times. If there's an extreme drought, people might not be able to stay in the area. They might have to migrate. It's estimated by the um, the climate change panel internationally that 150 million refugees will be moving purely because of climate, let alone the fact that climate problems, lack of water could cause wars and civil unrest and cause even more migration. Related to that, that's this political and economy business. We know that LEDCs are going to be a little less resilient because they don't have the finances to deal with this stuff like an MEDC does. Um, we know that agricultural changes are going to happen if there's not a lot of money and food normally available in the LADC. That's very risky um, for the agricultural, re the reliance on food, which is already so desperate to suddenly disappear in the event of a drought or a flood. Um, so this unstable money situation is going to become even more unstable. The governments can get really frustrated with the lack of being able to deal with some of these extreme events. Um, and a lot of these places that are LADCs, they, de they depend on tourism. And so if there's, if it's no longer fun for tourists to go, or maybe they were going for safaris or going to go see the Amazon, but it's gross or people are scared to go, they're not going to be making the same amount of money. Other places are going to be able to have tourism for the first time. Interestingly enough, there will be some benefits. For instance, because of the melting ice, the Northwest Passage is, was first nav navigated again um, for the first time ever in 2007 because there had been too much ice there previously. This is changing how our global economy works because people are able to get around different ways. So, I mean, there's some negatives, but there's definitely going to be some positives, I guess. Um, so let's summarize those things. The summarization of the negative consequences overall, we're just with this n n not normal weather, with a, we're swinging at just a couple degrees. It's changing the whole global climate. This will change how water's distributed. That was seen through the weather patterns. That's going to be also seen through how much water we have available to drink. Plants and animals will shift. That's that biome shifting. Ocean currents and sea levels will change. Those extreme weather events are going to cause drud droughts and floods. And human health and populations and urban areas are going to be negatively affected. There's also some benefits. Some places are going to have less extreme winters because it's going to be warm. You know, maybe Siberia will be somewhere where people can live now, I guess. Um, maybe some places that were dry for forever are going to get some rain. And maybe they'll be able to grow stuff for the first time. Um, and some places that are having monsoons all the time, maybe the, the drought will be not so bad, question mark. And um, some places, because of these changes, maybe they'll grow food for the first time. Um, and then because of this, this the, some plants and animals, they might be able to move higher up on mountains, maybe, or higher north and south where they couldn't before. Our polar animals, though, and plants are going to really struggle. So here's a big last summary. Hopefully had a lot of impacts, both positive and negative. We're going to practice them in class. Wonderful job, guys.